I'm sick. I feel like shit. I have to be a little quiet right now because um, it's five in the morning and um, my roommates are sleeping and stuff. So, but um, I woke up and I felt you know, like I wanted to make a video right now because I, you know, there's a lot of times that like there's thoughts that come into my mind and I I take too long to capture them and it's uh, not good. It's, it's annoying because my best ideas usually or my inspiration usually, usually comes at times that are inconvenient. <laughs> Today I felt like fuck it. I don't care. You know, I'm 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 at a point in uh, YouTube where I need to not worry about like what I'm supposed to do. Kind of so like fuck it. Let's make a video at five in the morning. I made a video that none of you have seen probably because uh, I posted it on my gaming channel, the the original Freak Show, the Freaks, and uh, basically what I said on that video was that I was stepping away from like doing commentary videos <clears throat> you know the rationale for that is like i think that you know i've been doing youtube for going on four years now i think you know at a certain point you gotta like sit and like look around at like what you're doing and try and realize like whether or not you're doing things that are helpful you know um, I already talked about like the reasons I'm not going to do commentary anymore and stuff like that is it's just, you know, it's, it, I viewed, um, the things I'm doing now through a lens of regret, you know, positioned myself from uh, a point of view of being 80 years old and looking back on my life, you know, and I think that's a very beneficial way of looking at things at, um, what you're doing and where you're going and what you would, you know. Regret is a powerful tool to use retrospectively. And obviously, you can't retrospectively use regret once it's already here, you know. So you have to imagine a world where you are, you know, already at that point where you can regret your life. So I positioned myself at like 80 years old and look back at my life and, you know, commentary just wasn't it, you know. Um, I could do commentary or I could not do commentary and it wouldn't really be like, oh, I'm so, like, upset that I didn't talk shit about some fucking stupid YouTuber, you know? I'm gonna be an 80-year-old man, and I'll be like, damn, I didn't criticize Hassan more. I feel so bad about my life, like, fuck off. <laughs> but then I positioned myself in looking back at, um, you know, not pursuing, you know, the build, the building, the foundation of, like, my OFS, like, the, the freak show sh stuff. And uh, I realized, yeah, that I would regret not pursuing that and not pursuing like the um that project and similarly with like music and stuff like that uh if i didn't even try yeah i think i'd be like a very pissed off like sad old man that i never tried those things um but like i said like using regret as like a retrospective tool before you get to that point is very beneficial and i think um this year is going to be a very big year for me for like taking an active role in directing myself as far as like getting stuff done you know that i i i, I want to do yeah i'm just starting to understand a lot more you know how i should take an active role in like the ideas i have and like you know stuff um all of this to really say is i am realizing that you know for better or for worse i am replicating a lot of what i see uh, being successful you know for the last i think few days no probably for the last like couple months i've been thinking and concepting and trying to like come to where i am now and i think i'm almost to a place of like okay i think i know what i need to do and um, it's really good i think um, obviously i don't know if it's really good until probably next year or something like that we'll see uh, we'll see how everything goes, how everything turns out and stuff like that. You know, I'm a, I like experimenting. So, um, this year will be in, like an experiment to see how everything goes. So obviously this channel is not going to be like cared for like at all, um, for a little while. We'll see, um, where it all goes. Cause I'm going to be putting my entire soul into the freak show, the OFS stuff, um, doing content over there. And one of the big reasons I came to that conclusion is because, or let's back it up a little bit. The thing that I am realizing is that 
I have been kind of walking the same path that everybody around me is walking. To an extent, it's good to clone. To an extent, like to learn how to video edit, how to make videos, how to do the thing. It's a good idea to be like, hey, listen, take inspiration from the people around you. So like, that's why I was doing commentary was because you know what? I felt like I could learn a lot from it. I think the original outset for me doing this channel was to get better at talking on camera. And, um, you know, I'm slowly getting better at that. And, um, you know, it's been a, a constant back and forth of whether or not I should script things or whether or not I should go free. Um, and a lot of times I, I opted to script because um, it's, it's, it's frightening to go off the cuff about a few of the situations that I've talked about. I think I've handled a lot of, of the, um, the, the topics that I've talked about pretty well, pretty responsibly at least. Even if I'm a little dickhead, um, whatever. <laughs> but the original outset was to just, you know, get practice on camera. And um, I think I've overtly gotten pretty good at that. I'm not bad on camera, I don't think. I'm not, like, nervous about being or having a camera in my face, you know, at this point. Um, which is good, you know. That's been the outset for a lot of, like, like, a lot of my projects have a reason. They're not, it's not just like, oh, hey, I'm here to capitalize on the commentary market or whatever the fuck. Um, it's, it's always a, in an attempt to try and like advance myself in some type of way because ultimately, like, obviously, if I'm going to do a job on YouTube, I need to get good at talking on camera. I need to get good at being able to um, speak to an audience and stuff like that. And um, commentary was just like the best route for that the reason for the freak show stuff that I explained in my video over there. But the outset was, again, to improve at video editing, improve at the type of videos I was making, so like gaming stuff. And um, I think I've, over the years, like, got a better understanding of what I'm supposed to do. And all of this, all of this, everything, everything that I've done up to this point has been a clone of what, like, other people have done. You know, it's never been, like, something novel. I've never really brought, like, a novel spin to content creation which is fine you know if it's fine but that's what the topic of this video today is new and different right now i'm just new i'm not very different you know i'm not very different from other commentary youtubers or i'm not very different from other gaming channel youtubers you know i may be really good um you know i would i would consider myself pretty good at the things that i do over on the gaming side and here even you know i may be pretty like enjoyable and whatever but i'm not different and that's that's an important aspect of all of this it's a very important aspect of it that i think a lot of people don't realize that they are making a mistake on is being different i've been trying to work out this idea a little bit more you know the idea that like you have to be different and not just new um, and the way I explain this, uh, thought is through like a visual analogy. So we'll walk with me for a little bit. Let's say that you and like a few friends are having a party and, uh, some of the friends are going to be bringing like dishes. Uh, let's say it's like a friend's giving or some of some sort and you're all supposed to bring a dish and bring it to the table. The first person shows up and they have a, like a full turkey. Your, f your friend has a f turkey that they bring to the table and they set it at the front and you know the people that are already at the party they're like oh hey let's have a bite of that turkey let's go fuck yeah let's there's a turkey now the time starting into the turkey and stuff like that you know everybody's having a good time a little bit of time passes and then another person brings a turkey same size about um seasoned a little differently and they put it on the table and you know some people start to pick at it a little bit and they're like oh you know what? This turkey is actually better than the turkey that was here before. Now the turkey that was here before is already getting picked at. It's already like partially eaten. Um, but people, you know, start to get word that like this turkey is a little better, you know? So like, let's have a try at it. You know, people start to enjoy that turkey and, you know, eat it. A little bit of time passes and another person shows up with uh, another turkey and they bring it to the table. And this turkey is perfectly seasoned, perfectly cooked. One of the most extravagantly delectable turkeys oh, that has ever been made. 
and nobody eats it. It's not because your turkey's bad. Your turkey's the best turkey of all time. But people are full. They've already had turkey. There's not a lot of interest in this new thing, even though it's better. Even though it's so much better. So much better. It's new, but it's not different. It's the same shit. It's another fucking turkey. Now there may might be somebody who comes over and is like, oh, wow, this turkey's fucking amazing. And they will even tell people that it's amazing. But nobody's hungry for turkey anymore. Nobody wants turkey anymore. They already got turkey. They already got these two perfectly good turkeys. You don't need to take another bite of another fucking turkey. You know, even if it is the best turkey of all time. I'll take your word for it. I'll be like, you know what? I'm satisfied. My body can't handle more turkey. A little while later, somebody comes, but they don't have a turkey this time. They have pie. And they put that at the table. And everybody stands up to get some. And this is an illustration to basically basically show that can't just be new and bring the same dish to the table that everybody else is already bringing and expect anything to happen because they people are already satisfied it's not the case that they wouldn't enjoy this meal it's the case that they have no more room to enjoy it they've already had their fill of turkey so when somebody brings a pie that's something brand new and it's different it's not a turkey again you know how much turkey you're gonna eat really before you're like oh this is you know just another turkey but a pie it's something brand new and different it piques their interest you know another turkey walks through that door <laughs> i'm gonna be like motherfucker are you serious another turkey rope yourself so that's where i'm at right now you know i don't want to be the third turkey i don't want to be the fourth turkey i don't even really want to be the second turkey i want to be new and different and you know, I'm trying to figure that out. And I think I'm on the way there. You know, I'm not exactly going to tell you what I'm going to do that's new and different because then I'm giving the fucking game away, right? But to try and go that route. I'm not saying that you're, it's impossible to be the third turkey and, you know, go off. You know, you can, you can definitely do it, but your odds are way fucked because you got to figure if you're on the main road everybody's on the main road in traffic you're heading the same way as everybody else there's a fuckload of people in front of you and there's a fuckload of people behind you some people are getting to their destination some people will never get there because you run out of gas you just you just say fuck it you give up you get off on the next exit and you go back home what makes you think that you are going to stand out among the, the crowd of people that are heading the same way as you, you know? Everybody else thinks that they've got what it takes. Everybody, you think that, like, your personality is going to make you stand out among a sea of other personalities that are interesting and different. And you think that your personality is going to make you stand out. It might, but why bet on that? You think that, like, your video editing is going to be, like, so good that it stands out among other video editors this is a video editing this is a platform for videos you don't think that everybody and their fucking mom is trying to be like the best video editor you don't think that they have the time and you know whatever you're racing against you're, you're stacking the cards against yourself with these thoughts and especially in a, a market where like i'm trying to excel in where it's gaming what the fuck? Yeah, oh, I have a friend group that is funny. Motherfucker. Everybody's got a friend group that's funny. Well, unless you are unless you don't got any friends. But if you have a friend group, they're probably funny. And if you have good editing skills, you could probably make them even funnier. Um, so you're fighting against all of those motherfuckers. They're all doing the same shit. Gotta bring something new and different to the table if you want to make this work stack the cards in your favor at the very least if you want to play the game right you have to be different and this goes for pretty much any um creative career path why are you gonna try and play the same game that everybody else is playing why 
can't expect to choose the easiest shit like YouTube editing, like video editing, and being funny. Those are things that it's the entry, the bar for entry for those things is non existent. Like you can do that today. Like anybody can get into that. And there's not a lot that like comes with it unless you are the best video editor of all time or if you are the funniest person on earth like these things are not ways you're going to be able to like surpass the competition you're not going to like increase your odds with those skills you have to go different ways and like kind of get ahead of the crowd by carving like a new path that goes in front of everybody you need to have a skill that has a high bar of entry it's harder to replicate and um that's where i'm at because people will eventually replicate you like it's a, it's inevitable that's better than being the person that's replicating other people um it's harder but at the same time maybe it's not because like who knows where that path goes it could lead right off a cliff but also you don't know where the what's happening in the, on the main road either why is everybody here? Why why are we so backed up? Why is there so many people here on this fucking main road? Where are we going? You have no fucking idea. There could be a cliff at the end of that motherfucker. You know, there could be a big ass wall. And people are, you know, at the very fucking front, miles and miles and miles down the road, getting off the exit because there is no way forward. There is nowhere to go. So why not take the path that you can build yourself at the very least because if you don't know how to build a path if that path leads to a cliff you don't have to drive off of it <laughs> you can just be like oh well i have the tools to build a path let me build a fucking new one i guess let's try and work our way around this and eventually you'll find a way over that cliff eventually maybe you'll even be like hey listen if i build a path maybe i could build a bridge you know what i mean that's where i'm at i think you know and that's about it that's all i really want to say and um Maybe I'll do more of these videos here and now, um, just on this channel, because, like, fuck it, why not? But I'm going to try and, you know, pursue some goals this year. And not, I, I don't I don't make New Year's resolutions. I think that shit's, like, literally the dumbest shit ever, because everybody gives up on that shit. Um, let me give some more practical advice. Don't make New Year's resolutions um, that are general or broad or not laid out as far as like what the plan is to attack those things. If you make any like type of resolution, have a goal in mind, have an actual number in mind of like what you want to reach. Make it realistic, don't be a dumb fuck. A lot of times I think like it's, I think it's like 80% of people give up on their resolutions by like February or something like that because they had a broad goal of like, I wanna do this, you know? You have no way or no plan of action of like how to attack that thing and how to get those goals and um, yeah, get fucked if you ever try. But if you have a number, that means you have tangible steps to get to that goal. If you have tangible, small, like short-term goals to reach a broader, larger goal, you'll get there. And um, I think I have to do that, you know? So, um, 